Hi, welcome to my class in Differential Calculus. And if you happen to be in this class, you will get the most from this class if you have taken algebra, plane trigonometry, and analytic geometry. You will find the skills that you learn in these three courses, algebra, plane trigonometry, and analytic geometry, very useful in the study of calculus. Now, calculus was developed by two of the most brilliant mathematicians of all time. These two mathematicians were Sir Isaac Newton, Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz. They developed calculus independently during the 17th century. There were some controversies about the development of calculus and if you would like to know more about these controversies, try to investigate and read the history of calculus. Now, Sir Isaac Newton was English, while Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz was German. The study of calculus is divided into two parts, differential calculus, which is our class, and integral calculus. Differentiation and integration are very much similar to the operations of addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. In the same way, integration is the inverse operation for differentiation. For our first lesson in differential calculus, I will explain to you the meaning of derivative. I will explain to you the geometric interpretation of derivative or the geometric significance of derivative. In calculus, the term to differentiate means to get the derivative of some function. To explain to you the geometric interpretation of derivative, let's consider the function y equals f of x. This function y equals f of x can be any function. It can be a linear function, a quadratic function, a cubic function, a polynomial function. It can be a trigonometric function, an exponential function, logarithmic function, or hyperbolic function. But in this notation for function, the variable y is the dependent variable, while the variable x is the independent variable. Independent variable x means that the value of x can be any value in the domain of the function f. And the domain of the function f consists of all those permissible values for x for which the function has a value or for which the function is defined. Now, the variable y is called the dependent variable because the value of y can be determined only once the function f has been evaluated at some specific value for x. That means that the value of y depends on the value of x. That's why we call y the dependent variable. Now, suppose we sketch the graph of the function f of x. The graph of the function f of x is drawn in the partition plane or the rectangular coordinate system. This partition plane or the rectangular coordinate system consists of two axes in the horizontal axis, we write the independent variable x. In the vertical axis, we write the dependent variable y. At the intersection of the two axes is the point which we call the origin. Suppose this is the graph of the function y equals f of x. This is the graph, assuming this is the graph of the function y equals f of x. And we take any point on the graph of the function y equals f of x. 
I will take this point at this point on the graph of f of x there will be a corresponding value for x which we denote by x sub 0 and there will be a corresponding value for y which we denote by y sub 0 so this point on the graph of the function y equals f of x has coordinates x sub 0 y sub 0 the first coordinate x sub 0 is known as the abscissa and the second coordinate of this point is known as the coordinate of the point through this point on the graph of the function y equals f of x we can draw exactly one tangent line through this point tangent to the graph of the function y equals f of x. Suppose this is the tangent line. So a tangent line is a line that intersects the graph of the given function y equals f of x at exactly one point. The tangent line and the graph of the function intersects at exactly one point on the graph of the function y equals f of x. As opposed to the second line, this is an example of a second line or secant line. A second line, as you can see, intersects the graph of the function y equals f of x at two points. That's a second line. While a tangent line intersects the graph of the function y equals f of x at exactly one point on the graph of the function. Now, the slope of this tangent line is given by the derivative of the function y equals f of x evaluated at this point specifically evaluated at x equals x sub 0 a line has a slope and the slope of this line slope of the tangent line is given by the derivative of the function f of x evaluated at x sub 0. We denote the slope of this line by m sub t sub l. m for slope of the tangent line. And the value of the slope of the tangent line is given by the derivative of the function, derivative of the function evaluated at x equals x sub 0. The derivative of the function f of x is denoted by f prime. f prime denotes the derivative, derivative of function f with respect to x. So that's the meaning of the derivative the derivative of a function, derivative of a function evaluated at some a specific value of x, say x sub 0, gives the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function y equals f of x at the point of tangency. This is this point of intersection of the tangent line and the curve or the graph of the function y equals f of x is called the point of tangency. When you evaluate the derivative of the function at the point of tangency at x equals x sub 0, you get the slope of the tangent line. And that's the geometric significance of derivative or the geometric interpretation of derivative.
Again, for the geometric interpretation of derivative, the derivative of a function evaluated at some a specific value of x, say x equals x sub 0, gives the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at the point of tangency where x equals x sub 0. To represent the derivative of a function, we use the following notations. We consider again the function y equals f of x. y is a function of x. The first derivative of y is denoted by y prime or dy dx. This indicates that we have we get the derivative of y with respect to the independent variable x or the derivative or first derivative of y can be denoted by this notation and we read this as derivative of y with respect to x. If you get the derivative of the first derivative, what you get is the second derivative. The second derivative of y equals f of x can be denoted by any of the following notations. You can use y double prime for the second derivative of y equals f of x, y double prime. Or you can use second derivative of y with respect to x, d squared y over dx squared. This represents the second derivative of y with respect to x. Or you can use this notation to represent the second derivative of y with respect to x. There are ways for getting the derivatives of functions. And we refer to these ways for getting the derivatives of functions as differentiation rules. But before we go to these differentiation rules, we get the derivative of a function by using one method, and that is by using the definition of derivative. For the definition of derivative, again, we consider the function y equals f of x, and I will use the notation y prime to represent the derivative of y equals f of x. The derivative of y equals f of x is defined as the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x approaches zero. Again, by definition of derivative, the derivative of y equals f of x denoted by y prime, is defined as the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x approaches zero. But what is meant by the limit of a function? In our second lesson in differential calculus, we will take up the meaning of limit of a function and the different methods for getting the limits of functions. And that is all for our first lesson in differential calculus, the meaning of derivative or geometric significance of derivative. I hope you learned something from this tutorial video for today. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about mathematics, including algebra, plane trigonometry, analytic geometry, plane geometry, solid geometry, differential calculus, integral calculus, differential equations, business mathematics, mathematics of investment, statistics, probability, 
and mathematics in the modern world. Thank you.